Today we're going to talk about adding and subtracting algebraic expressions. So our, um, we are doing day three of unit three. So you should be on page 160. And we're going to do adding and subtracting algebraic expressions. We're going to do them together because um, remember, usually our goal is to use the same word, uh, rules for adding and subtracting. We add the opposite in order to change subtracting to addition. So our essential question for today is how do we add and subtract algebraic expressions? How do we add and subtract algebraic expressions? So um, for your rules for adding and subtracting, so remember for adding, if the signs are the same, we keep them the same and add. If the signs are different, that one's a little different, we have to make sure that we take the sign of the larger absolute value and subtract. So we will review that all the way through this lesson. So um, a nice thing that this book does is that rather than just give us, you know, nice easy examples um, where it's just add these two expressions, they actually give us a word problem type thing and it's a little more useful than just adding two expressions. So we have one of each. Um, this is a very, very, very popular question that they like us to know how to do. Um, we all know that perimeter just means to add up all the sides, right? <clears throat> So when I do this, it's not going to be any different than when we did the last lesson where we were combining like terms, but the thing we need to remember, and if you notice down here, so whenever we have each of the different sides, what we're actually going to do is we're going to put all of these in parentheses. Now with addition, the parentheses don't matter as much as subtraction, but it's still nice to have our parentheses because it reminds us that we have those properties that we learned. Um, in our last lesson, which are the commutative and the associative properties. Okay, so we're going to reorder and regroup. So the first thing we can do is we can take away our parentheses, okay, um, because we're adding all of them, so really they don't really matter to us. The thing that we have to pay attention for is we have one little subtraction sign right here. So we just want to make sure that when we reorder and regroup these that we take that in consideration. So what I notice is I have two types of variables. I have, uh, I'm sorry, two types of terms. I have A's and I have constants. So the first thing I'm going to do after I um, change these all into, so using the associative property we know order doesn't matter. Um, remember that subtraction sign really can just be adding a negative. Think of it that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to reorder them so that all the a's come first and then all the constants are together. So when we reorder um, these using the commutative property, then we can actually regroup them, which is what we did down here. Okay, so right here we reordered them. And right here, we regroup them. So then, remember when you have just an A, there's really a 1 in front of it. So we have 1A plus 1A plus 3 more A's, so that gives us 5A. And then with our constants, I see that I have 1 plus 2 minus 3. So if we did that from left to right, 1 plus 2 is 3, minus 1 is 2. So our final expression for the uh, perimeter of the triangle is 5a plus 2. That would be what we were looking for. Okay, so adding is the easier of the two. We always know that. That's always how it is. So now we're going to do a subtraction problem. So the thing I want you to remember when we're doing a subtraction problem is Here's where you're going to have to rewrite it a couple times, okay? And the purpose of that is so that we don't mess up with our subtraction. 
All right, so um, I'm actually going to redo it right on the top so that you have a nice um, kind of all the steps go one, at a t one after another. Okay, this kind of has all the explanation, which is great, but I just want you to have a nice idea of what we're doing. Okay, so when we have a subtraction problem, so I'm going to rewrite it right up here. The thing I want you to remember is that we're actually kind of distributing that negative sign. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to change this. Okay, so if we're going to distribute this negative, we're basically multiplying everything by negative 1. Okay, so let's throw a little 1 in here. All right, so if I multiply everything by a negative 1, I'll get 4x plus 8 minus 3 minus 4y. Because I'm just multiplying everything by a negative 1. Okay, remember, think of this as adding the opposite. So that's really like adding a negative 1. Okay, and then I can regroup these, uh, reorder rather. Okay, so I'm going to get 4x minus 4y plus 8 minus 3. The only things that I can combine are right here. So my final answer is 4x minus 4y plus 5. And there you have it. So if you start it up a little bit, then you could you know, not have to run under room. Right, so again, 4x minus 4y plus 5. Easy as that. All right. Can't end the day without any fractions. That would be silly. All right, so Drew baked C corn muffins. So C is going to be our variable. Remember, we don't have to just have x's and y's. We can really have every any variable we want. So he brought three-fourths of the corn muffins to the bake sale and gave one-eighth of the muffins to his grandmother. So how many muffins did Drew have left? So the first thing we have to do is we have to um, write our expression. So in order to do that, so I see that he made C muffins. So that's what we're going to start with. Okay. Remember, of means to multiply. Okay. So we're going to have 3 fourths x and 1 eighth x. Okay, and what we're doing is we're starting with C, and then we're going to subtract each of those other things. Okay, because he is giving them away, right? So these would be minus. These would be negatives. Okay? So then what we're going to do is we're going to change all of these fractions so that we can do the work a little easier. Okay? So remember, the C, when we have a variable um, that doesn't have a coefficient, remember the coefficient is just the number in front, we can just simply draw a 1. All right? But now I have a 1 minus 3 fourths minus 1 eighth. So that's not really helpful, right? So instead what I can do is I can change them all right here. Okay. So make them all fractions. And better yet, with a common denominator. Okay, common denominator. So then what I can do is I can rewrite it like this, because remember, when you are adding or subtracting, my denominator fractions, my denominator stays the same, and all I do is I actually subtract all of my numerators. So I get 8 minus 6, which is 2, minus 1 more, which is 1. So my final answer is 1 8. Now another thing you could do, uh, another thing you could do, so I have, um, let's just say that I have, um, like eight cupcakes. 
I know it's um, one eighth, and we might have more than eight cupcakes, but this is um, this is also helpful. So one whole, so these can um, each of these boxes, let's say it represents like our batch. Okay, so if I have eight out of eight, and I'm subtracting six, okay, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then I take away one more, so I have one eighth. All right, um, whatever way works best for you, but again, remember you can always draw a picture to model. All right, and our last one. So let's just read the question real quick. So Carter brought a ruler, bought rather, a ruler for $2 and a compass for X dollars. He paid a $5 bill and Y dollar bills. So how much change does he have? So we're going to write an expression. All right. So now below, what they've done for us is, they, is they've actually broken down the question to be a little easier for us to work with. Okay. So paid with a $5 bill. All right. So if we're paying with a $5 bill... And then Y dollar bills. All right. So that's what he is. He has that. He's using that. Now we are taking away the two dollars plus the X dollars. Okay, because we're paying. Okay, so this is coming out of the money that we have. So we're going to add up how much money we have, and then we're going to subtract out how much money we actually pay for. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the opposite of 2 plus x, which is negative 2 plus x. Okay, so we're going to do all of our steps. Now again, like I said, we're going to distribute the negative 1. So I get negative 2 minus x. Okay, or if you want to think of it as negative 2 plus negative x, remember that's the same exact thing. Okay, then we're going to rewrite the problem. <clears throat> so I get 5 plus y plus a negative 2 minus x. Okay, so now we're going to reorder and regroup. So let's just rewrite this real quick. So 5 plus y plus negative 2 minus x. So let's do y minus x plus 5 plus negative 2. Okay, so I'm going to get y minus x plus 3. That would be my final answer. Now, it doesn't matter what order you write this in. Um, I'm going to leave it just like that. You could write 3 plus x minus, I'm sorry, 3 minus x plus y. Remember, just whatever is in front of that number carries along with it. So regardless, x has to be negative, y is positive, and 3 is also positive. Okay, so in simplest form, Carter received y minus x plus 3 in change. Now, I understand that sounds silly because obviously Carter received a certain amount of money, but remember, we don't know how much, um, how many dollar bills he has, and we don't know how much the compass is. So the purpose of this is once we did find this information, we could substitute our numbers in and easily solve the equation. All right, so that is day three of expressions and equations, and that is adding and subtracting algebraic expressions.